Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of chemistry at the AP IBHL1 level. We have been talking about how structure dictates function, and the first part of this unit discussed pure substances, and we focused heavily on intermolecular forces. And what we're moving into now is a discussion of structure and function within a variety of types of mixtures, including uh, aqueous solutions and alloys. Uh, so let's forge ahead. Now, uh, this is an expectation that I have that you understand from pre-AP, and you need to know this these varying definitions for homogeneous, heterogeneous, colloid, suspension, and solution. Uh, how increasing the temperature affects the solubility of solids. Now I've incorporated into day three's work in class uh, uh, some reference to that, so we will revisit that one. Uh, you need to explain the effect of pressure on the solubility of solids. Well that's pretty easy because it has no effect on the solubility of solids so there's that um, but it does have a major impact on the solubility of gases and so again i will incorporate a few of the problems you did in pre-ap i'm just going to snag some old pre-ap homework and we will revisit it in class this is key the three factors that increase the rate uh, be careful because there's a different in the factor that increase the rate of the reaction versus the factors that affect the amount of solute that will dissolve. And so I have pre-OP videos if you need to see those. We are going to analyze some solubility curves, but I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Um, I can reference those videos if you need it. I want to move instead into a discussion of some things we haven't seen before. And in pre-AP, we didn't talk too much about alloys. We defined alloys, and that's it. Now, in our last unit, we talked about the structure of alloys, and now we want to look at how altering the structure of a metal by turning it into a mixture affects its properties. And this is right out of the AP review guide. Um, remember, we had interstitial alloys and substitutional alloys. Uh, a substitutional alloy is going to be about the same size as the, uh, the bulk. You could call it the solvent metal, all right? And it's going to replace, it's going to substitute that metal in the lattice points. Just want to refresh your memory. An interstitial is in between. So you see that uh, we still have iron at all of the different lattice points, but in those gaps within the lattice, there are gaps, and in those holes, they embed carbon atoms. And that's how they make um, steel. So let's fill in a, our, our blanks here interstitial atoms do not appreciably expand the lattice right they're they're filling in gaps so if we still have this same volume so if we have the same volume it's noticing it's not changing but if you add the mass of these interstitial atoms throughout what we've done is uh, the density is increased. So that's one of the properties that gets altered as we change the structure. So it's often substantially increased. The interstitial atoms make the lattice much more rigid. Okay, it doesn't have quite that flexibility, that malleability. So we decrease the malleability. So that's key, and we decrease the, uh, the uh, I don't know if we would call it ductability, <laughs> but it's less ductile, okay? So it's not as malleable and it's not as ductile, all right? Because of these uh, atoms getting in the way of those gaps and preventing the movement. Now, in a substitutional, since they have about the same radius, notice we have the same volume here. So again, let's talk about a constant volume. Yes, we changed the mass somewhat, 
by substituting, but it's not, you know, it's not increased substantially like what you see in the interstitial. So in this case, the density typically lies between the component atoms. So in this case, the density is going to be between the zinc and the copper densities. Okay, and again, looking up densities for those substances, you have to be a little bit careful, especially for the zinc, uh, because the density of the zinc really depends on the packing of the zinc, and, and that's going to depend on the form of the zinc. And I, I give these reminders during the videos, and I really wish you would remember to ask me to bring out some metal samples for you to see. We get so caught up in doing the work and I'm running around helping people, I forget these things. So if somebody remembers, I'll pull out some different forms of zinc. Um, the alloy remains because you still have that metallic structure with the sea of electrons. That structure's not being interfered with by, by plugging up the holes, so to speak. And so the alloy remains malleable and ductile. All right, so alloys typically retain that C of mobile electrons. Okay, so you still have delocalized. Remember, they are not fixed to a particular D, D, decal, <laughs> delocalized, sorry, electrons. And so we have that C of mobile electrons. And so metal alloys typically remain conducting. Now, what can be important is that an alloy can alter the chemistry. So this is something of a physical, I would say it's an ambiguous physical chemical change because you do have that metallic bond formation in there. Uh, but uh, often it can alter the chemistry of the surface and you can get an oxide layer and you know sometimes we don't want oxide layers there will be time when in uh, later on in the year at the end of the year when we will need to scrape off an oxide layer because it interferes with the reactivity or the conductivity but there are some times when that oxide layer can be protective and protect it from maybe further corrosive further corrosion. So uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes an oxide layer on the surface is a desirable type of thing. Okay, so that's it on our alloys. You need to study these stuff. Just even talking about it right now, I've thought of some more questions that might help you learn this a little better. So until you do that on day three, this is... Signing off.